Uh, we are here with the elaborators. It's episode 37. 37? 37. Wow. Yep. Um, I've unmuted you early, so I don't forget. Okay. Welcome, cool. Pastor Justin and Pastor Stan. Hey, here Pastor with Justin's us. back. Yay. He's alive and well. Yeah. He's it's, alive. He's alive. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, you can define whether you're well. No, I mean, it depends which way you think about it. A lot of people think I've been sick for a long time, so I don't know. I'm feeling well within myself, and oh, well, that's uh, good. And, and you guys, of course, together in unity as brethren, you make me feel great. All right, well, that's the episode today. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks being with us, everybody, for coming along. <laughs> it's been great. We're going to wrap that up on a win. <laughs> Just a group hug and leave. <laughs> Done. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, no, and, pastor, we are. and Pastor Inike is not even here. Right? Pastor Inike, well, he, yeah, he's a group hug guy. <laughs> he is, he is. Imagine it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we're here. It is, it is episode 37. 37. We've done a few weeks uh, with Pastor Justin away, and now he's back. So the gang's all back together again. And today gangsters. we. The gangsters. I'll let the crew, the viewers and watchers define how gangster we might be. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. can, they can, they can, can I, like or dislike that one. Can I just say, us in a street brawl? <laughs> us in a street brawl would just be one shot of the backs of us running away. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole Yeah. That's the yeah, whole scene I, there. I'm not that fast. I can't run that fast. Really? <laughs> but I only need to run faster than one of you. Oh, so good. I, I, okay. I don't have to outrun okay, now people got, Now I've got a Seinfeld anyway. race going on in I was, the, I was gonna down, down the streets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I refuse to run. But we are we have been talking a little bit about living generously the last few weeks alongside a series here at mm. Wherever Baptist Church, and we will do so again today because Pastor Stan preached on it on Sunday, just gone, yeah. and it was a lovely message. Do you feel more generous because of what you preached to yourself? Wow. Yeah, I'm just asking That's because you know, every preacher, yeah. every preacher, you got to look in the mirror. Yeah, oh, if, yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't yeah, know yeah, this yeah, about yeah, preaching, yeah. every preacher, if they're not preaching to themselves, they're not doing it right. That's why I've got no money. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. So uh, actually, I did notice an extra fifty in my wallet. Was that from you? Hey, <laughs> well, I heard the story uh, about this guy that uh, was uh, talking to his wife, and uh, they were having a, a debate. You might mm-hmm. say, okay. and, okay. and he said, "Are you worried?" He said, "I'm, I'm, he, worried. He, he, I'm worried." He, he, he told her, "He said, if it wasn't for my money." This house wouldn't be here. <laughs> and she said, and if it wasn't for your money, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, the marriage series now comes we can, up next. Now we can wrap up the podcast because we've <laughs> explained everything we need to explain. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, uh, no, yeah, this is that random podcast. My question to you, right. my question to you, preacher boy, is <laughs> you preached on Sunday. Yes. It was a Sunday. Um, but you preach that throughout your week to yourself. And yeah, mm. do, do you feel challenged when you speak about that stuff? Oh, always, yeah. always. Uh, but because, you know, the things I'm telling people about planning and predetermined and everything. And, you know, I have to start thinking about that again for myself. Right, right. And the reality is I've lived in, in, in I think, uh, in that way personally for so long. It's a habit. It's just, it's normal. But then when I start thinking about it, I say, okay, have I revisited that? Do I do that? What would my budget look like? Uh, because, you know, I, it's a set Because I, I just assume, know? I've known you for long enough now, I assume that when you go home and put your keys on the keychain, your hat on the hat rack, and, you know, you sit down in your big, um, you know, chair with your cigar, and, oh, do you still, no, <laughs> I, I assume that glossy, you open up glossy your- Glossy tiles and velvet tiles. walls. <laughs> There's a jazz band. Wow. There's wow, a jazz wow. band in the corner for some reason. Hey, I, yeah. I, I, I think the other file was better. <laughs> so so you sit down. I assume that you open your laptop and and for 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 pleasure you just open a spreadsheet with your budget. I just figured that was how you roll at the end of the day. Oh my goodness. No, that's not how you roll. You don't know me. <laughs> You don't know me. <laughs> anyway, no, but you are a spreadsheet guy. You are you are known as a guy who's pretty organized, more organized than <clears throat> than a lot of people, and and it is something you like to join the dots. So, do do you find that a um, is it a calming experience for you to revisit your budget? How does it is it something you do often? I don't know. Uh, no, it's not. It's not something that I do often, and that and that's what I was um, uh, getting at there when I'm an- answering the do I feel gentle right, preaching right, right. to myself? It's like. Well, no, I actually haven't revisited this stuff myself. Mm. They're just general principles of life, and I just just do it. Uh, but um, but you know, I feel good when I am organized. When I've got uh, the bills paid for the month, and most of them are set and forget and everything. But then when I, if I have to, you know, one thing I really hate. No, come sorry. on, come on, right, go, go, go. Here we go. Yeah, this this podcast is going to be about That's okay. nothing. But uh, anyway. Is, is when <laughs> this, you're, you're, you're pretty, pretty you, successful TV shows out there. About <laughs> I was say, we shine <laughs> your, your, now. Your credit card has an expiry date. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I put all of my bills, the recurring bills, on that credit card. Sure. So once a month, I pay off my credit card, and I never have to think about, am I paying my bills? Right? Right. And when that expiry date on the credit card comes, all those companies, the water company, the electric company, the gas company, the, 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 you know, no the insur- all the insurances... Then they start sending me a nasty email saying you yeah. didn't pay your bill. It's like, yeah, I did pay my bill. And then in, anyway, and setting those up for the set and forget, it's not the same for everyone. And mm. some of them are harder than others. Anyway, I'm sorry. Thanks this for is a good rant. I like this okay. rant. I, I, I had to go through all of this because I lost my wallet for so long. I ended up getting another <laughs> the, another card because yeah. I thought, well, it was done. Right. Like it's been right, months. Right, right. Yeah. So I got a new card. I just had to do all that. And then I found my wallet. Yeah. So yeah. then I had to cut the card. But, but, but anyway. exchanging money for goods and services – is is fu- fundamentally what causes a lot of pain for a lot of people. And it's not necessarily whether we had enough to begin with or have enough at the end of the month. It's just knowing that these things just keep – and it's it's adulting, knowing that this stuff just keeps coming at you right. and keeps coming at you. So I think the, the point that I always take from these conversations is the, the predetermined and the planned part of it is trying to create – and it's the same in our spiritual lives and our physical lives and all that. You're trying to create margin – Mm. So that these things don't, you know, just sink you uh, at, at all of a sudden. And I, I think that, you know, adulting, for most of us, it's that thing of it just creeps up and you realise you're in the midst of this and maybe you've, yeah, maybe you got married or maybe you had a kid or maybe you, your car broke down, you had to buy a new car and you just keep doing whatever you need to do to get by. To make it work, yep. And, and I think <clears throat> the conversa- these conversations are so important because at least it gives us the opportunity to pause for a moment and go, am I doing more than getting by? And, and, you know, you keep saying we're the richest people on the planet. We're in the top 2% or top 2%, is it? No, uh, no, no, no. You're in the top 1%. Top 1% yeah, of you, the pop- you are. You are. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. That was very directed, <laughs> wasn't it? That was a little bit aggressive there from Steve. Well, no. It was, <laughs> it was a little bit no you. It was not intended that way. But, I know. You know one, one of the questions that, that uh, some, someone's asked was, you know, when we talk about the planned and predetermined and percentage and priorities and all, all those things, which you know those are biblical because they're all peas. But mm. anyway, all the peas are in the same pod. <laughs> but <laughs> you really no, it's stop perfect. It. It's perfect. Anyway, anyway, what are the challenges for actually getting that started? And the greatest challenge mm. is most people that are listening to that message or, or this podcast or whatever. You're already living at you're living on a percentage, but most of most people are living on 110 or 120 yeah. percent. So when you start talking about giving 10 percent and saving 10 percent and all that, they're like, "How in the world do you do that?" Because I'm already so overextended, mm. and that's when you file bankrupt. No, just kidding. Mm. Just, I'm, I'm living. Joking. I, I'd happily admit that I'm living on a blurry percentage. A yes, blurry percentage. So, I have yeah. a very distinct percentage allocated, prioritized, right? And then I have a pretty reasonable percentage saved and then the final percentage is very blurry right mm. but that that's the living percentage yeah but yeah. i but it, it and you are living on it. I, it we're living on it but i don't know like month to month it's do, do, you, do you rob the other ones to uh, add no, to that no then, then you are living on a percentage yeah and the beautiful part of that for when you say it's blurry that if you're living on 80 percent or 70 percent or whatever that that is for you and that's blurry that means sometimes you're not even using all of that right Right, so you're actually saving more, and but there have been. I know for you guys, and I'll, I'll make up for that in a future month. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, you guys have had a, you know, over the last three or four years, <laughs> your family has had particularly large interruptions. There was a death in the family. There was, uh, there was a, a trip to create memories. There was a whole lot of things yep. that you could not have budgeted for, but they were important to the humanity of of each other and to the loving of one another. So I think that's another part where you go almost your love for one another. It's almost like you have to put the, the it's impractical to love one another sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm always interested in what we do to interrupt our lives. The classic idea of if you had to do this, you would just find a way to do this. Uh, you would find a way to raise the money for the thing the church needs to build or whatever it is. We've mm. all we've all done things at times where we've just been we've had to. So I, I take these conversations as moments. So for anybody that's feeling really guilty right now and they're living on 150% of their income and, and they're shame, and they're, shame, they're feeling, shame. But that, that's really what it does equal, isn't it? You know, and, and the keeping up with the Joneses part of it yep. where they look like they've got it all together and they look like they've got everything and whatever. Those social reels. Yeah, right. Well, um, see, watching everybody's highlights real compared to your realities and mm, whatever. Yeah. 
But this this conversation, I'm hoping, allows people to take a pause and just make us consciously aware of maybe do look at your bank account details. Maybe do look at your bills that are coming out. Maybe do look at how many streaming services you're subscribed mm. to, or or apps that are taking money out of you that you don't even know. And uh, you know, hopefully, do it with some confidence. And again, around our church, so I'm rabbiting on here, but around our church, we do have help for people like that. And we we with with coach and stuff like that. And uh, what's the cap. Uh, cap, cap cap cap? Yep, that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. So there are there are people that can help and want to help and will be very very gentle with us yeah. as they and help they'll be generally. But but sometimes you got to be firm about it too. And and <laughs> yeah, and you you do that's because true. the the reality is if you're living on 110, 120, 150 percent. That's not sustainable. That's yeah. going to catch up with you. And, you know, to, to, to start saving and giving and all those things that, that, uh, that we've been um, expounding on or, or promoting, you've got to get on top of that. Mm -hmm. And to get on top of that, you're going to have to put a system in place that uh, uh, there's a guy called Dave Ramsey from the States who uh, is a big financial guy. Um, uh, what, what's the book? Can't even remember now. Anyway, he wrote a lot of books, Google him. Mm. And he says, you, you, you want to live today like nobody else so that you can live tomorrow like nobody else. Right. Meaning you're able to give and everything. But to get there, you're going to have to rein it back. You're going to have to sacrifice some things now. You're going to have to not go out to eat as much. You're not going to be able to have your lattes and your magics. I heard that this this week about the magic coffee. How thing. have you lived in Melbourne this long and not had a magic? Don't know. Don't know. Um, I, I'm so, I swear I've made you a magic. You may have. There you go. Maybe I didn't find didn't it didn't understand that the magical. Magic. So, mm, uh, that's anyway, you got to sacrifice some of those things mm -hmm. for for a while, and um, you know may, maybe not get the new car. Maybe wait two or three years before you do that. But you got to get those finances, uh, get that debt down so that you can then start giving, saving, then living, and, and get those sorted out. But the, the other thing is when you start that, you're going to start by setting up an emergency fund. Because, uh, Pastor <coughs> Justin, you were just talking about when things come up, you mm. figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, And the, the beautiful part is once you decide you're going to take – you're going to get the finances under control – you start by creating that emergency fund, and then you set it aside. You forget about it. You leave it over there so that when that thing comes up that you're going to do no matter what, mm. oh, I've already planned for that. And that, that all sounds so simple and everything. It's easy for me to sit here and say that. Uh, but it takes hard work. It takes a lot of effort. Yep. And you're not going to get there overnight. It takes prioritizing. Prioritizing and planning. I, I think the, the pressure of the now, um, it, you know, it, often things feel like now or never, and there is an in-between. Um, you know, the shiny object that you want now, right. that if you don't get it now, you'll never and get if it. If you don't buy this today, it's not going to be available to you tomorrow. Right? Exactly. And for all the salespeople out there that use that uh, as a strategy, congratulations. Shame, no, shame, well, congratulations. Shame. It works really well. <laughs> but um, but, the, but how many things around your own home can you look at and think, I bought that because that was going to be really important to me. And, and now it's not. And of course, you know, we're raising kids. So mm. I've, I have a hundred examples mm -hmm. of that most days, it's, you know, mm. like, like I think you shared earlier about the getting the plush toy for the child when the, when the child yeah. said, if you get me the plush toy, I will never ask for anything never, again. Never, ever, 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 ever. Which in a three-year-old's mind is, is perfectly reasonable to say that. Mm. Mm. Uh, but you know, what I've, happens when I say that though? When you say that, yeah. I, i you know me, I love you enough to buy it for you. Yes. Yeah. It's right, okay. right. But it's next okay. week you're going to have yeah. something else. <laughs> Can I have another sound Short term memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but we need we'll, another computer in that building. <laughs> well, but again, we, we do work in spaces of technology where the technology is improving all the time. And the if we had the next piece of technology, it would ease the work burden. So that's a different mm. conversation well, if altogether. We had the, if we had the next piece of technology, it's going to outdate the other 10 pieces of technology that we have. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, man. So, so, but, but again, anyway. the, the, the next and never, the, the, the now and never part of it, there's got to be a next in the middle that says this is the next step. So I, I always think these conversations about are about, you know, uh, I've often, early on when I was listening to these kind of conversations, I associated them with personality types. There are personality types, yours included, hmm. that this is just a very sensible conversation. It makes sense. Hmm. For me, some people have noted that I'm a little bit more of an emotional type thinker and may respond to different stimuli. <laughs> and so I like shiny things. 
And so it's actually been a, a, a very big discipline for me over the years. How old is that jacket? This jacket is about six months old. Okay. Uh, but, but I, did, I didn't recognize that one. I didn't recognize right. Yeah, I do have a. Yeah, jackets are a thing for you. Uh, it is. Right. And I rang my mother recently and said, Mum, what do we do? I said, you've, you've been living in this space for a lot of time, a lot of years. How do we overcome this addiction that we have? <laughs> and she said, um, sorry, Barbie the wardrobe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But but the way and again part of the justification for me is I always look for the cheapest thing the the the, the brand that's good at the cheapest price with mm. the sale and all that sort of stuff. But over time, of course, it can still add up to more money than you would have spent otherwise if you've bought the one thing. Right. So, uh, but again, but you got twenty seven of them. Now. Got twenty seven yeah, of them for right. the same price as three. So you know, right. that's that's how I kind of emotionally justify. Well, it. I thought the jackets were because when you grew up, you guys were really poor and you didn't have one. You were cold all the time. Well, when so. I grew up, yeah, I mean, you know, when I say a house, I really lived in a hole in the ground <laughs> in a cardboard box. Uh, but the, but the point is that whatever it is that stim- for some people, it's the 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 saving is actually the addiction. The the I'm never using the money. It's always yeah. there. Look how wealthy I am. The Scrooge McDuck, look at my pile of money. Well, and that that's actually the – I'm a big proponent of saving. But you can take that to a point where that's actually a form of greed as well mm-hmm. like because of what you're just saying yeah. right now. Look, I need to build bigger barns to put all my stuff in. That's a biblical reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you're just hoarding. You know, yeah. and, and what are you going to do with all this stuff? Are you going to leave it to your kids who are going to be irresponsible and, children and, and waste it anyway, right? So, so then, I, I'm spending my kids' stuff. I, I guess for me, again, <laughs> these <laughs> spending the inheritance for me, it does come, and you've heard me say this many times feelings outweigh facts every day of the week. How we feel about <laughs> our money, and what I'm, and when I say that, I don't mean the facts are not facts. <laughs> What I mean is our feelings drive us more often than not. So how it makes you feel to save, how it makes you feel to spend. Uh, and, and what we're saying is there's a biblical principle in the middle that says here's how to use what you have to benefit the whole community. Mm. Yeah. Which I guess is supposed to be reflected as best we can in church life. That's really part right. of what this community is trying yeah. to do. So how, how do we – sorry, I'm just taking over the questions. How, how, how do we do that in church life? Because I think we've got some good examples around here. How do we do what? Balance the giving. Balance the giving. Hmm. Because surely that's another part of the budgeting. We we well, we try and share what we have as a community with the community. Right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. So. Yeah. When people are giving, we're we're not hoarding as as a church. Yeah. Uh, we spend everything we get, and then we look for more to spend. And we give it away. We, mm. we do things in our community like the community meal and like giving away food and things like that. And the coach program where we mentor people in the community who aren't a part of our church. And then we send workers overseas mm. to places where they haven't heard about Jesus and where they also, uh, you know, don't live quite as well as we do and, and stuff. Yeah. And we, mm. we try to help them and teach them not only about Jesus, but also practical things to help them in life and, and, and stuff like that. So so yeah. we use the money for those things, hmm. not for jets for me or, you know. Uh, I did notice your jet does need a bit of a polish, actually. Yeah. Simon's on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I t- <laughs> took my jet four-wheel driving and yeah, <laughs> so I got it dirty. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. But, you know. My brain just died. Oh wow! <laughs> I had something really, really strong there. Balancing, I'll balancing. Yeah, no, you were talking yep. community, church, spending what we spend. Yep, yep. Oh. Had nothing to do with all that. Mm. Gone. Yeah, it's wow. Gone. It's completely gone. This, he, he started thinking about his jet. He started thinking about the jet. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need. I I yeah, can't right. believe I still don't have you a know, jet. What, what he was no, thinking, my, he was like, oh well, I've got the yacht. So now yeah. I'm get, <laughs> no, no, my no, my jet's a 2020. Come on, you know. Um, yeah, they 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 got they got new. Ah, pins here's here's what it was. Oh, good. It, it's completely unrelated, and it actually might be more Go for <laughs> more it. on track with some is that when we talk about uh, the, the the finances and everything, and probably most people have already tuned out of the podcast today because they've heard us talk about money enough, but it's actually like everything else in our lives, spiritually speaking even, it's a discipline. That. And it comes to, you know, they, they, I wish I was more disciplined in a lot of areas of my life. I, I have a gym membership, <laughs> and I should go to the gym, and but, but it's all about when the alarm goes off, mm-hmm. thinking, oh, my goodness. I don't want to get up yet. And I would need to get up that much earlier because of the traffic and Wyndham and everything. Anyway, I digress. But it's it's a matter of discipline. And your finances are the same. It's about, you know, it, it takes discipline to pray. It takes discipline to read the Bible. It takes discipline 
to actually control your anger and your temper with other people and things like that, your children when you're trying to raise them. All of that stuff take, takes discipline, and your finances is no different than that. It takes discipline so that when we you – know, and, and this is not a, a crack at uh, Pastor Justin, but he said the shiny things. Mm. You know, It takes discipline when we see the shiny thing to say, okay <clears> – <throat> Do I have predetermined planned money that I can actually spend on that shiny thing? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to be violating some of my stewardship principles and everything if I go after that shiny thing? Right. And I think to pick up on the point of going to the gym, one of the one of the problems with a gym membership is it's you just by yourself. Yeah. And discipleship is not you just by yourself. Mm. I believe, you know, and again, we go back to Acts and, you know, the early church and we look at we look at the way they tried to develop it. We know there were issues. Acts 6 and 7 happen <laughs> after they try and live it out. And it turns out it's hard to be a human and give everything away. But the bottom line was there was community movement together. There was an expectation. It's the classic thing of if, if, if you live in a neighbourhood where everybody else mows their lawns a certain way, you will eventually mow your lawn the same way. It's just how we, we come together. And in this community, it looks and feels like that. So and when when you're brave enough to be part of a church, to be part of a faith community, you will pick up on these habits because people around you will say, this is how I use my money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, and gym memberships work the same way. Do you want to go to the gym with me is much different to I'll try and go to the gym by myself. Oh, much you know, different. I'm calling you going, where are you? Well, yeah. you said you'd meet me. Yeah. So now I've got a peer that's helping me do mm -hmm. the thing that I said I wanted to do in the first place. Yep. You can also, with the gyms, uh, as a continued example, the long-term planning to go to a gym and see mm. results versus the shiny thing that is the instant reward oh, well yeah. for that spending. Well, I saw this piece of um, – it's like a, a thing that sucks your tummy in. I thought oh, yeah. I might just grab that first sure. and, uh, and then go to the gym. What do you reckon? <laughs> We've also got to take your selfie stand. Oh, so, of course, yes, yes. And your phone, selfie stand, just just that and workout life, yo. Yeah, so you can work out, hashtag yeah. it right. Yeah, but again, we talk about the discipline. That's where, of course, the same same root word is discipleship. Um, it's not you by yourself. It's alongside. Mm. And so I do, I do love for all of the foibles and the the stuff around church life that's hard to do, because um, you know these are complex communities. But I do think that over the years of, of faithfully coming to church and being part of a faith community and leading in them as well has has kept me on track with a lot of things that I otherwise might have just, you know, given up on and or, you know, you know, um, sort of ran into brick walls with because there mm. are other people there going, hey, Jazz, I can see you're heading towards the brick wall. How about we, mm. <laughs> you know, and it, it's helped over the years, of course, in, in so many ways. Yeah. So Stan, with the with giving in church world, <coughs> pardon me, what's the difference then between the continued planned giving and like the there's a need and I'm going to give to that need? Yeah, well, we you you need the continual plan. As far as the the church needs your continued planned giving that, that's regular, faithful, and everything we can count on it. We can actually budget and know mm. what we can do and what we can't yeah. do. Uh, the spontaneous giving that you're talking about is when uh, something comes up, there's a need that develops, and uh, there's an appeal that goes out for that. Uh, the difference between those two is one is planned, but the, the spontaneous isn't unplanned as far as you personally, because, uh, as, and I shared on Sunday, that you actually create a pile over here that is for that. So you don't know what exactly you're going to spend it on, but this is my spontaneous giving pile. It's mm, like, not okay. your savings. It's not my savings. It's no, just spontaneous no, no. giving pile. Right, but we'll take your savings too. The uh, SGP. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> SGP. Yeah. I, I used to struggle with this working with – I've worked with a few NGOs and I'd ask for child sponsorship. So I'd stand up the front and yep. say, hey, everyone, sponsor the child. You yeah. know, I, I when I, I thought about yeah. actually carrying around a picture of my family and saying, sponsor, <laughs> sponsor a child. A child. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And one yeah. of the things I struggled with, I guess, morally was how uh, – and because I was often uh, talking to children under the age of 18, so I was, you know, big youth events, that type of thing. Mm. And I knew that they didn't have income to sustain and mm. yet we were trying to ask them to get on board with a missional thing that was a planned giving or, you know, once, once a month kind of giving – and so eventually one of the NGOs I worked for, we, we came up with a way of allowing kids to just donate $5 um, because, again, it was one of those things of the principle was a good principle. I, I want you to think outside of your own box. I want you to see children that are in more need than you and, and understand all of that. But half the time for us as communicators from the platform, it's that fine line between that, that 
teaching of the discipled way of looking after what you're giving and not stepping over that line into manipulation. Mm. Mm. And that's why, what, what, for me, it's a when I teach on giving, and in, in a 25 to 30 minute sermon, it, it's really hard to get all of this in. But if we're doing a course on, on giving and we're actually coaching you uh, personally on your finances, we'd look at that and very, it, it's possible mm. that I might would tell you, actually, you don't have anything to give right now. Mm. You know, that we need to get this sorted out so you can. But to get there, you're going to have to do these three things first yeah. before we actually get there. And some people will, will just cringe at what I just said. Uh, but because uh, you should give the tithe first and, and, and all that. And tithing is a wonderful principle. Mm. It's not a law. But, yeah, sometimes everybody's situation is Could, unique. I just want to grab you on that because you just said it so clearly. It's a principle, not a law. Right. And people get stuck on the guilt factor. They get mm. stuck on the if I don't. And it gets back to that God's an angry God with a big lightning bolt mm-hmm. kind of theology. If, if I don't, I'm a bad person. And so much of money and giving – sort of is is almost designed to tap into that. You have failed if you do not do this. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. not what... <laughs> and, and God's going to take it anyway from some other way. If you, <laughs> if you don't give it to him, he's going to take it from you. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And again, poor theology. But um, but again, that that kind of thing that it, it's based on a, on a guilt um, response or, a, or a, um, an acceptance amongst the community response. If everybody else is doing it, so why aren't you? And I've certainly, and I know you have too, talked to people in the past that almost have refused to give because they can't get past that feeling. See, I, I, and and then other people that are trying to give out of a place that they should just stop, they're, they're not in a place to give, so please stop, please look after, let's look after you right, first. Right. Well, even taking it out of giving, there, there's people I know that mm. actually, uh, I'll say, serve too much in the church, mm. that their family may be being neglected because right. of all the time and everything they're putting in there, and serving is great. But if you're doing it to the neglect of yeah. your family and all that, and if you're giving to the neglect of feeding your kids or paying your bills and all that, then and just you say, hey, I'm going to throw all my money at God and let God take care of it. Well, maybe God actually gave you the money. Why don't you take care of your bills first? And and then, yeah. Yeah, because again, this is not a taxation. This is not a church taxation system. It's not how it works. It is a it is a right. principle of giving that allows you to, I believe, over time, you realize that generosity is just because lots of people are generous, but it is a strange thing. And this is where it comes back to Christians being, as Scripture puts it, a peculiar people. We are a peculiar people because we give to this thing that doesn't make a lot of sense to people that are not part of it. It, it mm-hmm. does look a bit strange. Why would you give? To that thing, yep. that and I don't have anything to show for it. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So it's it's a strange thing, but it's a, it's a fundamental and almost stubborn faithfulness that we have that says, "I've just seen it work so many times. I've seen it work. It just yeah. works. <clears throat> this is good." So yeah. outside of outside of us not being financial advisors, oh, good. Yes, Correct. right. Yes, this is not. Uh, what do we have to say? What's the disclaimer? Uh, please just talk to your local financial advisor, or we can give us. Please read the PDS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's before it. you invest, could you please write take, a PDS? Take this whole podcast with a grain of salt. That's probably the, the disclaimer. Um, yeah. No, um, if you don't give, you'll be turned into a pillar of salt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what when? Uh, oh my God. What when? Oh. What when our listeners want to actually do something about it? What can they do? Um, what, what about practicals? Use pepper instead. Uh, yeah. Practical. Well, practically. Um, if you're upside down in your finances and there's just no way when I, when I talk about give, giving, saving, living, yep. and, and you start or you you start with the giving and all that, if there's just no way you can see your way forward, get some help. And we offer, as uh, Pastor Justin said before, a uh, cap course, things like that. Sign up for that. You can go to our website and find links for all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, get some help to get that started. But practically, if you can see your way, just start with, with that simple paradigm shift of a generous living paradigm where you start with giving, you say, you know what, I'm going to do that first. And if I make a thousand bucks, I'm going to give a percentage of that first and decide how, how much that is. And then just almost as important as savings, because so many people, you just live on everything and set it aside. And then one day you're going to look back 10 years from now, you're going to look back and say, Hey, I started giving, or giving that much, but I also started saving this much. And your savings is going to be a pile, that yeah. you and you're going to be shocked. We like piles because we can swim in them. Yeah, yeah. 
So so anyway, just, well, we do, we just do practically also, just start doing it. But if, we, you, if you need help, get some help. Don't try to do, go this alone if you're right. struggling. Mm. And and if um, we do offer, we have a, a spreadsheet as well, don't we? Speaking of spreadsheets, mm. we do have mm. a little tool that I can put on the um, podcast links. That's the tracking tool. The, ex, the expense tracking thing. Mm. Yeah. Well, that, that's, a, it, that's a discipline it, in right. itself. And, that, and that's not a budget or anything. That's, no, no, no. That's just a confrontational thing. You know, yeah, but it, where it's, you look it's at it and you a say, tool wow, to wow. start looking at, yeah, categories. Of where you know, oh, I just realized I've bought 43 coffees in the last you know three days at five dollars, six dollars each. What's mm. wrong with that? Mm. Yeah, well, well, that's a that's a spiritual that's a, that's a spiritual discipline, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, but but I think that honestly, for me, again, I, I think we finances just talking about finances in general is a bit of a bit of a taboo subject our culture keeps talking about these things that are taboo like you're not allowed to talk about you know sex and stuff like that well i'm like that those things aren't taboo in our we talk about those things openly we don't talk about podcast well well, not this one anyway that's my (laughs) other underground podcast uh but the no no but but finances how much does it cost you to live or what do you earn or those kind of questions there are certain social protocols to that that we have to you have to. You don't have to give up all your information, but you have to be at least brave enough to say, I, "I'm feeling really tied up in knots about this stuff." Yeah, yeah. We don't and talk about somebody... money, religion, or politics. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Except we do. Except don't we? we do. Yeah, right. oh, we're, we're happy to. Yeah, yeah. and we, we talk about it at the extremes. Either that person's really wealthy or that person's really broke. We don't seem to be able to talk about it openly at the middle ground where most people exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I just need a little bit of help, just to help me get on top of. Um, yeah, the day to days, so that I can start creating those little little piles that maybe become bigger piles later on when they're useful. And hey, you you've been listening to this podcast, and potentially you're sitting there and you're thinking about all the other people mm. that need help that you know and you you know they're irresponsible financially. Share this with them. Share the podcast. Share the link. Share our website with sermons and everything. I like that. I thought you were going to say people. start looking at yourself, not thinking about all the other people. And you're like, tell all yeah. the other people yeah, you t- do t- have t- a problem. Well, well, yeah, and take care of yourself first. But 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 I'm, also, yeah, share share it around yeah. uh, because uh, we need the likes and we need the, uh, the shares. <laughs> I'm just going to so. go home and open my app, my my banking app. <laughs> right. Well, I was going to say like this week. Yeah. This week, what like you know, let's. Open up the apps. Nearly every bank now has got yeah. the, the phone app or the online web thing. Mm-hmm. Get in there and have a look. Start actually self-reflecting. Yep. Well, I've decided I'm probably never going to get drafted to the NBA. Okay. So that contract's not coming through. Sure. Uh, I have offered to drive an F1 car. That seems to be a good paying job. Uh, they don't want me for that. No. So I guess I'm just stuck being Golf. who I am. Golf's, well, pretty, golf's Golf. pretty well paying. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I've thought of a few <sighs> options. Seems and- easy. You just hit a ball on a hole. Data mining for Bitcoin seems to be out now, and uh, my NFT thing never took off. So, no, uh, like, like in the last six months, it's gone up from seventeen thousand to like fifty three thousand. It has for again, one Bitcoin. and nobody Bitcoin, actually right, knows right, right. why. There's yeah, literally exactly. no reason. It's how, how many Bitcoin do you have? None. Yeah. Uh, no, because I just I again I that's a whole other conversation, and it is an interesting one. But again, the nature of speculation and why speculation drives us so much. Uh, Bitcoin is based on we there's there's a there's a, 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 a a court case right now. Uh, it was an Australian guy that claims he started Bitcoin uh, happening in London, and and nobody actually knows who started it. So it's it's wild the the emotional roller coaster, that, and that's just a very extreme version of the emotional roller coaster. Mm. Is does the church have to be able to receive Bitcoin? <sighs> not yeah. yet, thankfully, not yet. But um, but yes, mm. I, I assume not that's quite a, yet. That's that's something. I'm sure, there's some that do. Yeah, it probably is. I'm just not smart enough to know anything yeah. about it. Seems like a volatile way for a church to mm. receive and manage money. Anyway, yeah, that's a whole other podcast topic. Yeah. yeah, but my point is, it's an emotional, it's an emotional subject. We don't want people to feel shame about it. We want them to feel at least confident enough to say, "Hey, could you help me out, or could you help my friend?" Yeah, out or whatever. Our, our ultimate goal is to help people feel freedom. Yeah, in it, and and to be able to live generously because they're being responsible and they're being good stewards and everything. And because they, their finan- their finances are on track and they, they've got a handle on it so they can. It's not, uh, it's not just give us first and then just it'll all sort out. We actually want to help people get it all sorted out so they can live generously. On Done. that. There it is. There's the music. Kingdom first giving, living. Yep. I can't remember what the phrase is. I'm generous in giving because I'm kingdom first living. There it is. That's that's Stan's new country song. Take that to the bank. And uh, hey, speaking of new country songs, we got one this Sunday. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway. Ooh. Come on. Yeah. I think it's just called uh, Hope Multiplied. Hope Multiplied. And I can't remember the artist's yeah. name. Hope Multiplied by... Brett something. Brett. Brett, Brett Pickle. 
pick Jen- Jenkins Print. or something Jenkins. like that. Is oh, it no, it's got a K and an N in it. Put the yeah. link in the thing with the songs and the stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. hi to us on socials. We'll be back in, I don't know, however long before the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to go check our bank and make sure we've got enough money for the next episode. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah, See you yeah, then. Yeah.